Hi guys, welcome back to the Retro Asylum YouTube channel. My name is Dean Swain and today we're taking a look at Target Renegade on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now Target Renegade was an unofficial sequel to Renegade, first published on the British, um, well I say British, the Commodore 64 which is an American machine, the Amstrad, CPC and the ZX Spectrum which is published by a British software company called Imagine Software which were owned by Ocean Software and it was an unofficial sequel to Renegade the arcade game which had also been published by Imagine here in the UK so when the game was ported to the Nintendo Entertainment System which came as quite a surprise for me um, I was hoping that you know take all the best features from the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. The Commodore 64 version, although looked lovely and sounded amazing, it had you know an, a really really great soundtrack. Um, the gameplay was really quite frustrating, probably because of the uh, collision detection being broken mainly, and the game itself didn't play quite in the same way as the Spectrum Amstrad versions did and you know the gameplay on those two was simply better there's no doubt about it so we're going to take a look at this version as you can see by this demo mode uh, the sprite itself looks to have been nearly you know, completely ripped out of Double Dragon the head is exactly the same that's for sure and uh, although it's been reanimated uh, it's, it's not been done for the better. It looks very stiff. The arms don't animate. So yeah, let's give it a try anyway. Yeah, story-wise is slightly different here. In the original version, your brother Matt had been shot dead by Mr. Big. In this version, it looks like he's been kidnapped. So let's give it a go. Now, on the original version, you started off in a multi-story car park. Here it looks like you're on the roof of a multi-story car park. The original game did feature bikers trying to mow you down in the first level. So, it's definitely inspired by the original version. But they've gone in their completely own direction, it seems. And there's only one type of bad guy on this level, apart from the boss, which is these uh, bikers here. In the other versions, there was, or at least in the Spectrum and Amstrad version, there was two types of enemy. You had the actual bikers who wore motorbike helmets and guys with long hair. Christ, it's frustrating trying to get these. The bikes... They uh, reappear in very strange places once they've gone off the screens. And the sound effect. Oh my god. The sound effect's very annoying. Ooh, ooh. There we go. Music's decent. It's not the same music as the uh, original home micro versions. But uh, yeah, the music's by Tim Follin. Very nice, as is all these work, really. So yeah, Software Creations, they weren't you know, a bad um, developer. I'm surprised that they didn't do a better job at this. Right, try and get the heart. No, miss that. It seems to me as if you need to have as much energy as possible when you get to the end of the level, which I guess is fairly obvious, but the boss is just a complete killer. One hit and he's been killing me on any other go I've had. We'll see if I get any further but I'm uh, not that confident. A lot of flicker as you can see, your legs disappear a lot of the time which is a shame. Fairly common though on Nintendo games, on the NES. Uh, I don't like the way these bad guys are respawning. They get very boring quickly, just repeatedly hitting the same guys that all look the same. On the original version, you could actually 
uh, not hit the guys while they were on the floor, keep punching them while they're on the ground. Don't think you can do that on this version. Right, this is the end of level boss. He throws, I guess, in their tires or Weetos or something. Yeah, so it seems if I take one hit off of this guy, I'm dead. So I've got to move very quickly. Ah, ooh, actually survived that. No, game over. So yeah, very hard game. Can't exactly recommend it. If you are going to go for a scrolling beat-em-up on the Nintendo, there are much better games out there. Double Dragon 2 is probably one of the best. So yeah, give that a look instead of this. If you do want to play Target Renegade, why not check out the superb Amstrad or ZX Spectrum versions. Okay guys, if you've enjoyed this review, please do check out the Retro Asylum podcast. You can find it on iTunes, Podomatic, or at the Retro Asylum website, which is retroasylum.com. Cheers, guys. See you soon.